So today I am taking a day off from playing the guitar. And I just wanna focus on listening to new music. I'm gonna explain in this video why that is super important to me and why it might help you become a better guitar player. Now, it's a Sunday today, which seems like the perfect day to do this, you know, just kick back and drink coffee and just spend the day listening and discovering new music. Now, I would say like most guitar players, I have a core selection of guitarists that I just always have on rotation that I like to listen to. And because I like to really deconstruct the nuances of their playing, and because I'm pretty nerdy that way, having a very limited selection of influences just kind of helps me not get overwhelmed by the possibilities of what I could discover and delve into. Now, the only downside to this approach is that after a while, I tend to just get bored of what I'm hearing in terms of when I pick up the guitar because, well, my pool of references is just so limited. And that's how I've been feeling recently. <laughs> like that lick. That's just Robin Ford and Josh Smith to me. And I'm bored of playing that and having that be like a go-to phrase that I have. So I'm looking to get inspired and I'm looking to get some new references. Now I've always been a massive lover of music, a cursory scroll through my Spotify and you'll find endless of you know, playlists that I've created of music that has kind of captivated me over the years. And I still get really excited when I discover new music. Leave a comment down below and let me know of any new music, artists, songs, albums that you've discovered recently that you're really enjoying. And although I do love music, I do struggle to find time to actually enjoy it. And I guess that's something that we all struggle with having very busy lives and having a lot of commitments, and that's why leaving the house is always an important part of this process for me. I guess another way to think about this is less finding time to listen to new music, but it's just taking time and finding time in your day to get inspired. And being in the car is a good one for me because it's completely uninterrupted time. I can just drive and put some music on. So another thing that works really well for me is just going out for a walk. I think when we're at home, there's sometimes just too many distractions that sort of take us away from being able to just sit and listen to music and take that time to get inspired. And I also tend to get a lot of really good ideas when I'm out walking. It's like this new body of music that I've been writing and that is gonna be released in November. The first single is coming out I think at the end of the first week of November, um, which I will be confirming in future videos. But being out in nature, especially at this time of year, has been a big inspiration for those songs that I have written and all of the kind of marketing and the branding around that has been born out of just being in the outdoors. Getting inspired and having a great experience discovering music doesn't just have to happen at home. The context of where you listen to that music has a big impact on how that music is gonna influence you. So if I'm trying to take my guitar playing in a different direction, I'm looking for some new influences, how do I go about discovering that music? Well, for me, this hinges on, on sort of a couple of things. First of all, there are so many potential routes to go down, right? There is so much music out there that it can become slightly overwhelming of just knowing where to start. And that's where I think having a mission statement for your kind of discovery journey when it comes to new music is something that is really, really important because it makes you a little bit more focused. Let's take my scenario as an example, you know, recording this EP. I wasn't just discovering new music to help me write these songs. I was also trying to discover new music to get an idea of the tonal possibilities of what I wanted my recordings to sound like. I was having to send reference tracks over to the producer, compiling playlists of artists that were similar to me or had a sound on their records that best kind of represented the sound that I was hearing in my head. And, you know, going on a bit of a discovery journey from a tonal aspect will also inform your guitar playing and make you a better guitarist as a result because you'll just have a better understanding of the tonal possibilities of your instrument. And if you're looking to get inspired because you want to take your guitar playing and your writing in a slightly different direction, so less about, you know, getting influenced by different tones, but more getting influenced by different ways of 
of playing the instrument, then I think, again, that mission statement approach is going to be really valuable to you. It's having that objectivity of looking at your own playing and looking at where those gaps are in terms of the things that you want to get better at. You know, for me, working on this EP, with it being instrumental, I needed to think about songwriting in a different way and think about composition in a different way. I think when we all come from more sort of like traditional and contemporary song forms, you know, if we're listening to a lot of folk or Americana or rock or pop, you know, these song arrangements and, and chord structures and just song structures are, are pretty uniform in terms of it being like a verse and a chorus and then another verse and then a bridge, but that type of composition doesn't necessarily always lend itself well to instrumental music. You know, you have to think about taking the listener on a bit of a journey, it's more story-based. And I had to get some references and some inspiration to help me write in that way. You know, a lot of the music that I listen to isn't necessarily based around that type of song structure. Going on this journey of discovery really did help highlight the gaps in my playing that were kind of holding me back when it came to composing instrumentally. I was a little bit limited in my chord progressions and in my chord arrangements and my harmony, so I was looking for inspiration, some musical guidance of how to kind of bust out of that rut, I suppose. I was listening to a lot of classical music and trying to deconstruct some of the chord arrangements that you typically see in some elements of, of classical music, such as plagal cadences, for example. And I was even listening to a lot of Paul McCartney's songwriting because he used a lot of modal interchange in his songs where you basically are borrowing major and minor chords from relative keys to, you know, give your chord arrangements and chord progressions slightly more variety. And through my experience being a guitar player and a session musician and, you know, playing in bands and playing with other musicians, I feel like having that broad spectrum of music that you can pull from at any one time and having those kind of good references for just music in general really do help you in those musical situations. And the only way that you develop that kind of portfolio in your mind of references is by taking the time for yourself to get inspired and to listen to music and to actually listen to music that's outside of you know what you would traditionally play maybe when you pick up the guitar i mean we all probably have favorite genres that that we listen to but it's important to look outside of those genres and see what else can you know be pulled from in terms of you know musical ideas or phrasing ideas on the guitar. I mean, if you listen to a lot of blues, then maybe try listening to jazz because there's just gonna be things that are similar and there's gonna be crossover between the two genres, but there's definitely gonna be things from a jazz background that can definitely help take your blues playing in a different direction. And this sort of stuff really comes into its own when you're in those collaborative situations, especially if you're doing a lot of session work. Now, I was in a session recently and I was called upon to do some lead guitar on this track and I was talking to the artist. He mentioned that he'd listened to a Lady Antebellum song, um, which are a kind of country pop band if you're not familiar. And that was kind of the inspiration for the song that we were working on. And because I'm familiar with Lady Antebellum, in terms of I know, you know, a handful of their big hits, but because I've listened to a lot of country pop and, you know, I can call upon references such as Keith Urban, for example, when it comes to then sort of approaching writing a, a guitar part for that song, I, I have some references and I have some ideas that I can pull from in terms of just understanding maybe what he's trying to get out of me. And I think just that encyclopedic knowledge of just certain genres or just having a couple of kind of touch points that you can pull from, especially in a recording or in a studio environment, can definitely get you really, really good results. It's just the importance of, of having good taste, I suppose. And if you're still not sure the best way to kind of discover some new music that might inspire you. It's always great to just ask for recommendations from other people. I mean, Instagram is a great community, especially for me. There are tons of really great guitar players in that particular community that just have great taste in music. So strike up some conversations and just ask people, you know, what are they listening to? And then take those recommendations and maybe just kind of deconstruct it or reverse engineer it, you know, find the people that have inspired that particular artist. Take Eric Clapton, for example. I discovered Eric Clapton when I was probably about 14. 
and that really got me into the blues. But then through listening to Eric Clapton, I was then going back and listening to who he was inspired by, people like Muddy Waters and Robert Johnson. And then, you know, it just kind of gets you a little bit further into that, into that journey of discovering some some fresh ideas. And if you ever do get a recommendation for a song, just start playlists on you know your streaming service or music library of choice. I have endless playlists. And as soon as I hear a song or if someone mentions a song, I just save it and I add it to a playlist because I might not be able to listen to it there and then, but I can definitely go back and listen to it at a later stage. And that just means then that I'm building up that encyclopedia and because you know, Spotify and all these streaming platforms are algorithmic, the more you feed it in terms of, you know, what you're interested in, the more those platforms are then going to compile or curate playlists and music recommendations for you. And, you know, I find a lot of the editorial playlists and some of the Spotify curated playlists that are based on my listening, I've discovered a lot of great music through just exploring those. Because without being too philosophical about all this, which I definitely could be because I, I'm quite a philosophical thinker, I think, when it comes to like art and, and music. But if you think of it this way, you know, every new song, every new artist, every new album you discover is like having a different color of paint to paint with. You know, the more colors of paint you have, the better the picture you can potentially paint. And I think if you use that type of comparison when it comes to music, I think having that broad spectrum of taste and references and, you know, taking that time for yourself to be inspired so you can build that that bank of of colors that you have then i think it'll definitely help your guitar playing i'm always just a big advocate of listening to music as part of your practice routine i did do a video about this last week which you can watch here or here so if you have got time after this video, maybe go and check that one out. But I hope you found this video helpful. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, do consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, do make sure to give it a thumbs up so other people can discover this video and maybe discover some new music recommendations. Again, leave your favorite songs that you're enjoying at the moment down in the comments. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next one.